glasses. They really just want me to quit. Oh, hello, folks. Yes, I know you haven't seen me in a while. For I am the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. And boy, do I have a lot of catching up to do. Um, this was just one of those weeks where I cannot do anything right, I think. Um, it, it continues from last week and has been working into this week. So I know I'm behind a lot. I know I have not put as much content out as I should be. I did manage to get the special, though, from Impact Wrestling. So that's been up for a while. But I have a whole bunch of stuff and notes and, and show stuff to go over. So let's get started. Let's see here. Because I know it started, for the most part, in, well, on SmackDown. But wait. There's something very important I have to do. Well, two, th two important things I have to do first. One, <sighs> Eho Del Hobo El Vagabundo really slipped up. He only got like four out of nine matches right. He got the Stone Cold Lock right. The snooze was, yeah, kind of there. Still, though, he's not too good. That guy's just a regular wrestling mark. And let's see here. Oh, I have some thank yous to give out. And there's going to be a little bonus episode. And I do have, I have to make that video too. Wow. A day in the life of Hobo Tom. That video is going to be interesting. But that's okay. Let me get some thank yous first. And boy, do I have a lot of thank yous. Poopy. You, sir, do it to that six count. That's the muffler, baby. You are master of the air guitar.
Tyrone, you sir are digging the funky grooves on that briefcase boombox. Conferences! You can crawl out of here, sir. This one's, oh, this is easier than I thought it was going to be. Seanathon24, you sir are the ultimate heel because you always win by dirty pin. And this guy's name. Slavo Zakovic, PSA. I don't know if you're a Russian, but you're definitely a part of the El Generico band. The ghost of Roddy Roddy Piper. Holy shit. And there are some more people I was conversing with. Help we! You know, <laughs> Jordan Grace has some back. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Ryder, you are that luchador on a forklift. I'm going to screw this one up. Son of El Dopo Roll 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 Solly. You, sir, you're just digging the Mundo Madness.
Puffy. Natty is superior. Amy Webb. You know what? You have to join Nikki and be her tag team partner. Girl hold Fong. Oh my effing God. And that's it for all the thank yous. Again, if you'd like to be put on one of the many hobo lists I have here, I can, well, I, I should keep that. I need, might need that as a reference. Again, you can always hit me up. Go to the, my YouTube channel. Leave a like, share, comment, subscribe, send an email, which I don't check, or I haven't checked in a long time. Or you can find me over on Discord and YouTube. I am, for I am the one, the only, I'm Hobo Tom, baby. 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 Oh, yeah. And Britt Baker got some color on her, man. She looks better with red on her face. Whoa. That's kind of violent. I'm not here to talk about violence, I'm here to talk about pro wrestling. I'm here to talk about some SmackDown. And I was kind of worried because I thought it would have been another one of those shows where they had a 20 minute promo and only had, only had like an hour worth of wrestling. But uh, I was kind of surprised. It starts off, um, Edge comes up for a promo. Daniel Bryan shows up. He says, yeah, you know what? I'm not a has-been. You are. Or something to that effect. It's been a while. Because uh, in our first match of the night, it was the Street Pop Profits and with Ray and Dominic Mysterio taking on the Rude Dogs, which is Dolph Ziggler and Robert Rude. Yeah, I was going to say Rick Rude for Bobby Rude. No, it's, it's Robert Rude. Take an, and Alpha Academy Otis, heel Otis, by the way, and Chad Gale. So yeah, it starts off uh, with Rude and Dawkins. Dawkins getting a hot start. He hit oh, such a perfect drop kick. Wow, that would have impressed a lot of old time wrestlers. He hit a drop kick like that. Uh, Ford eventually gets gets in. He and Dominic. Uh, he he uses Dominic as a weapon. It's always good to see the human lawn dart being launched into someone else. So that's always fun. Uh, Chad Gable gets in. He has that am amazing series of butterfly suplexes. That butterfly suplex. Um, again, he really starts... This is when he starts that real technical stuff. So good to see Dawkins. He gets back in. Uh, Dolph gets in. Dolph can still sell. Dolph is probably the most ridiculous seller ever still. I have to see if that works smart at work. So many technical issues. I hate technical issues. Oh, it's here. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, Dolph, again, he has a good. He has a. You know what? Dolph's no slouch with that dropkick either. That looks pretty impressive, especially for a heel. Uh, Ford, he gets back. Um, again, Ford's quicker than Otis, but definitely not stronger. Ray, Ray Mysterio, how does this guy do it? He is just so flippy in the ring. Then we have your typical time for the spot fist to happen. Uh, eventually, it was a double six one nine four with that huge switching frog splash. This was actually a really fun match. Solid cheeseburger match. Oh, wow, there really wasn't a lot of wrestling. It's weird. Oh, well. Uh, then Molly Holly's going to be into the Hall of Fame. Jey Uso's backstage. Kayla introduces us to Seth. Seth. Why did you have to do that to, to, to the pristine body? 
for Becky Lynch. Seth. Well, it was nowhere near that one woman that had 11 kids, 10 kids. There's no tread on those tires anymore. <laughs> and then there was a little Reginald recap. And they took Reginald on a shopping trip. There's the hobo cat. Right, cheese butt? She just wants a little attention. I had to do double work today. I'll, I'll know everybody playing with her tail that you can't see. She's fluffy. But yeah, then Reginald goes on a shopping trip. And then, whoa! Started to get a little, little sexual there between him and Nia Jax. Yeah. We'll see where WWE goes with this. WWE either takes it way to one side, kind of teeters on it in the middle where it's kind of dull, or they're just like, whatever, and be done with it. Well, they don't end it as quickly as AEW does, though, which is good. But then they don't take it out to, like, the, the 20th extreme, the way Impact Wrestling does either. So WWE is kind of the happy medium. I miss my impact. It was good to see that one impact show this weekend. And then we have Cesaro taking on Murphy. The battle of men with one name. I have to figure out something of gold too. But that's a whole se that's a whole separate issue. Uh, starts off. Again, Cesaro so good. Trash talking. Puts Murphy in the headlock. Just yaps the whole time to him. It's like, so yeah, so you thought you were this good? I'm, Ca I'm, I'm Claudio Castronevitz. I was once part of the kings of wrestling. You are nothing, Murphy. You are part of Blake and Murphy. And in fact, people said that your girlfriend was more famous than you were. Oh, burn. Too hot to handle, baby. And I'm too cold to hold. Uh, eventually, again, the big knee... When he gets to the outside by Murphy. However, Cesaro does the inside out from outside in superplex. Again, Cesaro is probably one of the strongest pound for pound person. Very easy setup for the Cesaro swing. Then Rollins, Rollins, Rollins needs a death to finish, baby. Only Cesaro can win. So yeah, um, Rollins gets involved. Takes out Cesaro as he puts Murphy into the sharpshooter. This match was kind of quick and short. And then, of course, you have Seth Rollins getting involved. It's just a ham sandwich. Then we have the Kevin Owens show. Kevin Owens did see Sami Zayn a little bit before. He gave him a blank card. So here, have a souvenir. I like souvenirs. Look at that door of souvenirs. You know you like that stuff. Because you might not ever see that stuff again. Although it's been rumored, true rumor, AEW might start a house show circuit here in Florida. I'm surprised they're doing that before NXT does, because NXT has a classic Florida loop. Although they're allowing, I think, 25,000 in at WrestleMania, and they say the tickets start at $35. How true that is, maybe I'll see. Maybe I'll get to go to WrestleMania. Or at least one night of... I'll tell you what, that would be kind of fun. One night of WrestleMania. I don't know. We'll see. There's the hobo cat again. Get the, get the work chair out of the way. There you go. You can see her kind of sulk out of the room. Oh, she's going to the bedroom. She's going to take, take her nap. Whoa, let's see here. Um, then, yeah, so we have uh, Kevin Owens show. Uh, his, two, his two guests are Bianca Belair and um, Sasha Banks, Sasha Botch. Nia Jack, Shannon Baszler, Reginald shows up. Meh. Nothing special. Then we have Tamina and Natalya taking on Sasha and Bianca Belair. Tamina's looking strong. They're booking Tamina and Natalya pretty strong. Maybe they're making up for all the times they made Natalia fart and made her look bad and made her look like a dope. Made her look like a Kmart mom, of all things. Uh, even Natalia, again, she's there really to eat the moveset, though. But still, she, at the moment, she looks pretty strong. Uh, Reginald gets there. 
he <laughs> distracts the ref. The ref says, hey, you, what are you doing? Get out of here. But then, I'll tell you what. I don't know what Natalia did. Her tits got bigger. Get out of that outfit. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, she got mommy bags on her now. I wonder if Tyson Kidd's tapping that the way he should. Indeed. Uh, and then Reg um, yeah, the, the the original distracts the ref. The ref actually didn't see God here yet, but there, there was no. So get back in here. Uh, he goes up on the table. Him and Sasha are on the, on the table. Tamina wins again by a roll up because Bianca Belair is distracted. Tamina wins. Whoa. This match is okay. The whole thing with Reginald, I do want to see where it goes a little bit. It was a ham sandwich of a match. Then we have Apollo Crews and Big E. Kind of a recap of that. Uh, Sasha and Bianca are backstage. Bianca says, you know what? I'm done, of you, done with you and your business. Get out of here. Uh, Big E. Then... He has a promo. He calls out Apollo Crews. And he says, I have the open challenge. Uh, so, <laughs> very slowly and very methodically, Dolph Ziggler starts to head to the ring. But then, you know what? Sami Zayn's like, you know what? I'll get there first. And Biggie's like, I don't care. The first one in this ring gets the match. Sami Zayn runs in. And, yeah, it was just not good because Sami, he did, he, he did get... He, he did get the heat, which is good. He got the hot start. It's fun. But that, yeah, this just like annoyed B Biggie after a while. And then you have the. Yeah, the, there are some things. Um, the post. Everyone seems to be posting themselves nowadays. It's kind of getting old, very tropish. Out there in the YouTube land, let me know what you think about the wrestlers posting themselves. That's when they go for a spear or some other move and they like run right into the big steel post. I mean, he was fa famous for it in his match as El Generico taking on Delirious. That was, that was funny. That had humor to it. This now is just happening again and again and again and again. So it's like, yeah. What's the thrill of that? Uh, yeah. Then... Then he missed the big elbow. Sami Zayn gets hit by a couple of belly to bellies. Uh, big E hit the big ending. Sa um, again, kind of as you expected, Sami Zayn loses. But then after the match, Apollo jumps Big E. That's good. So this match, it was a ham sandwich. Then you have Reginald, Nia Jax, and Kayla. I think, I forget if it's Charlie Crusoe who might be on the outs or if it's Kayla. I don't know. Psst. Ladies, I'm single. Uh, then, yep, it's a contract signing. Roman Reigns wants to sit at the head of the table. Daniel Bryan signs the contract. Roman Reigns signs the contract. Then, of course, Shea Uso gets involved. There goes the table. It's a brawl. And I'll tell you what, this was a very weird, very pedestrian ham sandwich with SmackDown. And now, folks, let's come back to some Monday Night Raw because I did manage to catch a little, well, well, I saw, I had to watch Raw a little bit later than I had to. And then, because I worked Monday, what did I do Tuesday? I worked Tuesday, head off Wednesday, that was St. Patrick's Day, so I went up to Jacksonville. Yeah, today's Thursday. Wow, my weeks are all kinds of screwy. I, I, I honestly forgot what day it was today. I just now wake up and work. It's terrible. But let's talk about some Raw. Um, interesting show. It seemed to go a little bit quicker. I think Raw finally has 
The idea of what to do for a three-hour show, it all depends on their execution of it. And that can be a hit or a miss. SmackDown's consistent. Every so often, every so often it's consistent. And then it'll dip down. But then, then it'll climb back up. But it's, it's for the most part consistent. Raw is like a freaking roller coaster. You have no clue it does loopy loops every so often. So, crazy show. Uh, so it starts off with the almighty Bobby Lashley. It's beastly looking. And the Miz and Morrison come out. Uh, Drew McIntyre is there. Sheamus eventually jumps Bobby Lashley. So I think it's going to be Sheamus taking on Bobby Lashley at Fastlane, I think. And then there was a recap of what happened to Oscar's tooth. Oscar's missing a tooth because Shayna Baszler kicked him in the face. And probably prolifically said, please, I'm so sorry. How did I screw that up? And that leads us into the first match. Again, this is where Raw suffers. Again, they have the 20-minute segment for the first match. It wasn't that bad. It was Asuka. And at least with Bobby Lashley, they, they kept that part moving at least. Uh, so we have Drew McIntyre versus The Miz. And I was shocked. Maybe... <laughs> People always poo-poo The Miz, but Miz is actually pretty good. When you put The Miz in with any good talent, The Miz actually looks that much better. When The Miz has to carry a match, that's when I think he kind of wavers and flutters a little bit. But this match was actually pretty good. Uh, Miz, again, he's a very opportunistic heel. He jumps Drew McIntyre. Uh, Drew, however, is too strong. Miz punches Drew. This just seems to annoy Drew, which is great to see. Again, he is Drew McIntyre, which is good. Uh, Johnny Mundo gets involved. <laughs> that was so funny. Um, then, then he threw his sunglasses in as if to distract Drew. Drew stares at him, stares at the sunglasses, crushes said sunglasses. They're probably like $200 sunglasses, too, knowing the taste of one Johnny Mundo, who's John Morrison, by the way. I, he, he's always Johnny Mundo was his greatest character in Lucha Underground so it will always be Johnny Mundo to me uh, Mundo eventually gets tossed because the Miz was going to get eat a Claymore Mundo said now we're out and then the ref said you know what you're out of here because I'm not going to allow that um, and then then Drew has a big belly to bellies and then of course my favorite song, I am the barricade, I am the barricade, I am the barricade, cuckoo, cuckoo, the barricade. It actually, in the WWE, it hasn't been used as much as it, it used to be. So it hasn't been abused. Like, And of course, AEW uses the barricade in terrible ways. Again, they have a bike rack. At least for the WWE, the barricade looks like, like the bottom half of hockey boards at least. So I'll give them some credit. Where I always give credit where credit's due. However, when Drew, and this might be a personal thing of Miz, or maybe Marie said, you better not ever juice. Cause I'm not kissing any scarred up forehead of yours. Who knows? But if, and this might be not so much with a Miz, but more so for other wrestlers as well. If you're going to hit the steel steps, you better bleed, baby. Even if it's the hard way. Oh, Dusty Rhodes loves it when people bleed the hard way. And yeah, it just would make him look more realistic. Head hits steel, head gets busted open, blood pours out. Makes sense. You don't have to do a whole Britt Baker's like slice open an artery thing where she has a crimson face, which made her look hot. Ugh. To think about that. Although I did see a match with Thunder Rosa without her face paint. Thunder Rosa does look cuter with her face paint on for some reason. She is La Mera Mera. Thunder Rosa. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if I took her out on a day and, like, just paint half your face. Oh, yeah. It was very. Yeah, I'll, I'll wrap this match up and I'll say something silly. But yeah. Um, Miz needs to bleed. Drew eventually claims him not enough, puts the Miz in the full Nelson. This was actually a really good match. I was shocked. Maybe you have two high caliber wrestlers. Maybe Drew was carrying it. They knew what they were going to do. They knew uh, Mundo gets involved just at the right time. I honestly think this was a surf and turf match. And 
And then the other thing, I can't wait till COVID's done and over with. Because I know twice, probably more than twice, I've seen some cute lo looking women, actually probably about five times, in the past two, yeah, in the past week. Five women with their masks on look really cute. Then they take their mask off. Not so cute. Indeed. So yeah. Maybe it's just one of those things. Uh, then backstage there's Bad Bunny. Whatever. Uh, we'll get in more into him a little bit later. Yeah. Eventually. Where is it with Bad Bunny? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about more about him later. Um, remember, it was 316 today. Oh, hell yeah. Give me a hell yeah. I can't do a good Stone Cold voice. I can go, oh, yeah. A lot better, though. Yeah. I don't know what I'd do if I saw Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah. I don't know if I'd shake his hand or slap him in the face. Yeah. But, Tranquilo. Uh, so Bad Bunny's there, um, Braun, then it's, it's the Braun and Shane, they, they confront each other and say, I will have a match with you. Um, R-Truth is there, dressed up as Stone Cold Steve Austin. He has the Broken Skulls IPA, which is pretty cool. One day I'll, one day I'll have to get, one day I'll have to get the, the Broken Skulls IPA and whatever the Good Brothers have. Just to say, it's there. Maybe, I don't know, maybe for next year's Christmas party. All of some Steve Weisers. I'm sure I can order it. They'd probably deliver anywhere. Um, he's there with... Whoa! Oh! The women. Mandy Rose, Dana Brooke, Naomi, and Lana. Whoa! Because next it was um, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke taking on uh, Lana and Naomi. They're, they're going to see... Who is going to become the champion? I'll tell you what. Dana's boobies got bigger too. Her boobas grew a little bit. Somehow. I don't even know if that's possible. But uh, Naomi definitely is the most agile woman there. Uh, Lana. She's still good. Um, actually, Lana in the tag team is really good. I think it hides a lot of her her default um some of her issues so again this was good um again it was Shannon Baser and Nia Jax was there again Shannon Baser's cute Manny Rose is hot Dana Brooks hot Lana's hot Naomi's hot wait where's poor Nia Jax and all this Oh, well, who cares? But yeah, it was great. Because then, again, this will turn out to be your classic face versus face. Fairly technical match until it broke down just a tiny bit. Again, when Naomi does her multiple strikes. But then Asuka shows up, interrupts the whole match, fights Shayna Baszler through the ring. They go out. Everyone's like, who? So that was pretty cool. And, oh, by the way... Naomi and Lana came out in matching outfits. I'll, I'll applaud that. They're trying to be a tag team. A cohesive tag team. I like that. Um, actually, Dana Brooke wins. And gets the pinfall victory. Whoa. I don't see pigs in the sky. Who knows? Uh, then we have uh, Wood and Kingston. They have, they have doing a little promo with Matt Riddle in the back. Um, New Day come out in Mortal Kombat. Finish him. Once I saw that Mortal Kombat gear. Oh yeah, wait, that match, um, the woman's match, it was okay. It was, man, it was a ham sandwich. But then, um, so you see uh, Woods, and, uh, Woods and Kingston. They're in, of course, a corresponding Scorpion. Get over here. And then the Sub-Zero outfits. Once I saw those, I'm like, wait a second. Those are their special outfits. That should have been 
a hint. Um, because there was an edge recap. Then we had the New Day, New Day Rock, New Day Rock, taking on the Hurt Business. Uh, Cedric's in the woods. They go. Those two are so fast in the ring. It's so smooth, so technical. Oh, this was actually another really good match. Cedric, he flipped, um, did a flip into Shelton. Or he flipped Woods into Shelton. That was great. The heels tag work was good. I don't think there was any heel miscues. They wrestled cohesively. They wrestled with a strong style. They wrestled with purpose. That was actually really good to see for a change. Uh, Cedric again. His chops are so crisp. Kofi goes to the top rope. The top rope stomp. That's really good. Woods eventually does get the hot tag. Um, and then they, they did well up and over the table. That was interesting. Uh, Woods. Again, he, now it's his turn to get beat up. I like the fact that now... not it's, The good thing about breaking up the New Day is that Biggie's not, not there to get the hot tag all the time as the big guy. Because normally it would be Kofi Kingston or Xavier Woods who gets pummeled all the time. Then, of course... Big E, the bigger guy, would save, would save his little buddy. But now, because they're both small, they both take kind of equal beatings now. It's nice. It's different. It's some, at least for right now, it's different. And it breaks the typical tag team wrestling tropes. I like that. I like it when they try to do new things. And I'll be honest, this actually does work. So, again, things that work, stick with it. That was good to see. Uh, Shelton's too strong because uh, this time while well, Kofi got the hot tag however it's the SOS and Shelton Benjamin Shelton Benjamin is too strong he kicks out of the SOS again a little, little quick top rope suplex Shelton Benjamin's a freaking cat man if I ever try to climb those ropes the way he or some other like luchadors do I'd kill myself I'd twist an ankle I'd, 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 I'd re-sprain my knee tear f three out of the four ligaments in my knee Probably land on my shoulder, dislocate that, and probably, probably injure, like I have a C6 vertebrae injury as well. Was, uh, and, and then follow, follow it up with a nice concussion. If I ever tried that stuff, that stuff's amazing. Uh, but yeah, eventually New Day win after a series of double team moves, and then they do their, um, I don't know, Morning Wood or whatever they call it. That was kind of funny. But I'll tell you what, this was a good, solid match. It's a surf and turf match. Then eventually AJ Styles and Omos confront the New Day. I think they're going to have a match at, at, at fast lanes. That's going to be meh. Whatever. AJ Styles can eat the pin. If it's, AJ Styles can't have a bad match, I think, with those two. Even if Omos is a big stiff, that's okay. Uh, Miz and Morrison then confront Bad Bunny and Damian Priest. Uh, Truth. Says he says I want my baby back, and uh, he starts to give him all his Stone Cold merch, and yeah, big uh, bad money's like okay, here you can have your belt back. He's like I got Truth has his belt back. I wanted to see Bad Bunny hold on to that belt for a little bit. What I wanted to see, and this makes sense, I wanted to see Bad Bunny hold on to the twenty four seven belt. Not drop it to our truth, but instead drop it to John Morrison. Now the Miz doesn't have a belt. Miz isn't number one anymore. Johnny Mundo's number one. The way he should be. But that's a whole other issue. Maybe this video is going to go up a lot later than I think, too. But I don't know. We'll see. I still have to get to the gym. Too much time relaxing. Actually, not that and too much time working too. Uh, so yeah, Truth trades the belts. So that's pretty cool. Then we have Damien Priest taking on Jackson Riker. Um, this was the Haas versus Haas match. This was actually surprisingly quick. And I think it was quick because Elias um, eventually jumps Damien Priest. Uh, he, he picks up Bad Bunny. Um, Miz, <laughs> Mundo and Miz. They... They, they jumped Bad Bunny, so it, I guess it did what it did. It was okay. Uh, honestly, though, it was a can of soup. Then Lashley and MVP do an interview. Wow, there were a lot of notes. 
Then we get, oh yeah. Braun versus Shane McMahon. I don't even think this match started. Braun beats on Shane as he runs around the ring. Shane takes a camera. Braun eats the camera and then Braun gets slimed with Nickelodeon slime. That's all it was. And then we saw, of course, Alexa Bliss on her swing set being the crazy woman that she is. Then we have Asuka. Oh yeah, Alexa Bliss looks way too hot in that like schoolgirl outfit. Something's wrong. It's not just me. It's like the majority of Discord as well. Yeah. Someone said he wanted to be the seat Alexa sits on. That sounds so bad. But then we had Asuka taking on Shayna Baszler. This was amazing. Asuka just jumps Shayna. Nia tries to get involved. Asuka's not having any of that. Now it's just a brawl. Asuka literally tries to, to knock out Shayna's teeth. That looked really good. Um, again, Asuka's so great. Especially the way she, she takes out Nia Jax. Asuka and Shayna, they trade some wrestling moves. Shane, Shane does get some moves on Asuka's arm. Asuka goes for the ankle lock. Asuka is such a submission specialist, though. It's really good to see. Eventually, Shayna Baszler puts on the coquina clutch. Asuka flips over for the pin that Shayna should know is coming, like, right away. Because whenever Shayna loses a match by pinfall, it's always because she puts the clutch on someone, they do a backflip, and, they wind up, and she winds up pinning herself. I would think she would learn by now. I guess not. Uh, so Shane is upset that she's pinned. And then Asuka just sends poor Shane right into the turnbuckle. And then she's like, I'm not done with this. She takes the, the, that, that beautifully soft, pillowy turnbuckle pad off. Exposes the bolt underneath. That's... That's one of the hardest parts of the ring. That's a metal bolt. Not so much the apron. Metal bolt is harder than wood. Especially with padding on it. So yeah. Metal bolt's the hardest part. One of probably the top three hardest parts of the ring. Steel steps, metal ring post, turnbuckle bolt. Yeah, not, not, not the apron. But yeah, then she puts her... Her teeth right on top of that and like kicks her in the back of the head. Ooh, vicious Asuka. Whoa, I got excited there for a second. Indeed. So yeah, this was actually fun. It did what it's supposed to do. It was a cheeseburger match. So we had Matt Riddle versus Mustafa Ali. I refuse to call him Mustafar. That's a planet in the Star Wars universe. It's Mustafa Ali. Good heavy hitting match. A, a, um, very MMA style match. This was good to see. A very technical match. And then, and then, ouch. I'll tell you what. Matt Riddle could almost be in the New Japan neck breaking match. Because he took some pretty big neck bumps. Then you have a little bit of the yay boos. I think they're trying to incorporate and they're lightening up because you could hear the, the yay, boo, MP3 going on in the background. Uh, Ali hit a rolling neck breaker that's really good. I mean, a nice high kick by... Uh, each had each had their own moveset, but they could counter the moveset. Again, Ali would hit the, the rolling neck breaker. Riddle hit that, that, that kick and high knee. Uh, he also hit the, the Broton Bomb. Retribution, however... They need to learn how to properly distract. Because they don't do a good job. They do the distraction when their guy's winning. No. You're supposed to do the distraction when your guy's losing. Uh, eventually, Matt Riddle has the bro Derek. That's the end of that match. Riddle retains his U.S. Championship belt. Solid. I, I like the fact that, 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 that Bobby Lashley traded up. So, I'm happy with that. Cheeseburger match. And then we get to the main event of the evening. Uh, actually, there was a Randy Orton interview. Randy Orton's like, you want to face me, Alexa? Bring it. Randy Orton's going to wreck her. I hope. Randy Orton's going to make Alexa bleed. 
Actually, that would be something Vince would throw. Since Britt Baker bled, <laughs> he might make Adam Cole bleed. Then he might, he, then he might make Alexa Bliss bleed just to say, hey, whatever you can do, I can do it better. Now, the main event was Sheamus taking on Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley beats down Sheamus. That vertical delayed suplex. Sheamus isn't a small guy either. He still has that beautiful, amazing vertical delayed suple. That's good stuff by Bobby Lashley. Uh, then he goes right in front of Drew. Drew pulls up his own ringside seat. It's good to see that. It's good to see ringside people ringside again. Uh, Sheamus goes for the 10 beats of, of the Belfry. No, but Bobby Lashley, he can belly to belly someone too. He's no slouch at that. Lashley then posts himself again. Second time this has happened. Ugh. It's getting old. Bobby Lashley always posts him, seems to post himself every match. It's getting a, getting kind of old, I think. Sheamus, he does a top rope. A clothesline, that's good. Uh, transitions right into the arm bar. Then he hits, then he truly hits the 10 beats of the Belfry, the Irish first backbreaker, uh, the reverse, the reverse coat, stand, like the reverse cloverleaf. That's the move I haven't seen since, since 2K. That's good. I like the fact he's in court. He's switching things up. I like that. Uh, Bobby Lashley is just too powerful, though. He hits a flatliner. And then after this, Sheamus had it. After that went downhill from Sheamus. This might have been a squash match. Uh, the, the power slam, the flatliner. This is the beginning of the end for Sheamus. The superplex. He had the no jackhammer needed spear. Put him in the hurt lock. And that was the end of Sheamus. This was another good surf and turf quality match. And that was it. That was actually a really good Raw. So this was a two-part show. Uh, just a quick little news and notes. What's going to happen? Um, this is going to get, get get up as whenever I can. I'm not going to lie. It'll probably be sometime tomorrow on Friday. Friday night. I do have two more videos to make. Um, my Fastlane predictions, they still know what's going on in Fastlane. They canceled the Shane Braun match for whatever reason, so I have to figure that what's going on up there. Uh, make a SmackDown video since this kind of covered Raw. Sunday, I do have to work, so I'm going to be a little bit late for Fastlane, which is probably fine. I'll probably be, I hope it's not a nice quick two and a half hour show. It's over at 10 o'clock. That wouldn't be too bad. It means my show would be over probably about 10.30 after I kind of caught some of the, the highlights of it. Uh, Monday I'm off, so it's going to be a Monday Night Raw show. I don't know if it's going to be a live stream or not. That all depends how I feel. Tuesday I have to work again. Sorry, Sonny Bimbo. No impact again this week. Um, I don't. I have so much to do on that Wednesday. I might have to do my taxes on Wednesday. Um, Thursday I work, that's okay. Friday I work, so I might be able to catch the reruns of SmackDown. I have no uh, no clue. We could always watch it Saturday, so I'll figure something out. Oh, there you go. When these signs go up, you know exactly what time it is. Here in Daytona Beach, folks. It is bike week. And here I am. There's the one little footbridge going across 92. Thankfully, they put that up so you don't have to try and cross the street. My voice is hoarse because I've been calling people and being called all day. That's kind of the NASCAR building right over there. It's the official NASCAR headquarters. And this is a little special video that I'm making for you guys. Here we go across this bridge. I think I did choose the wrong bridge. I think I chose the long way though. There's the racetrack. I'll be back there on Monday. We are 100% guaranteed. And a little bit of a look. Walking over 92. Don't know if there's going to be much, and that's okay. It's nice, it's protected. 
Hopefully they do some races this weekend. It's kind of a nice little brisk walk. Got my sweatshirt on, jeans. I do have to get my grocery shopping done. So, because this week's all kinds of messed up. And next week is actually worse. So, yep. Oh, well, we'll see what happens. At, hopefully I can get some souvenirs. That's what I'm looking for. So that infield actually looks kind of full. I saw, I don't know if you could catch it, there are some trucks going through there. Some motorcycles. The good thing about showing up on a Monday afternoon is that it's not busy. I should do a ninja jump, but that's okay. I don't want to do anything crazy yet. Bye. So the most infamous, infamous moving company of them all. Oh, there's a, a Mayflower moving van. Yes, if you're old like me, they say I have to transport stuff too. Let's see here. There's a Best Buy. It's that place. Nice little walkway. Oh, look at that. Harley Davidson stuff set up. Big old American flag. I hope they have stuff like going. How do I get in there now? This is weird. So yeah, I'll give you a little bit more perspective. Again, if you're old like me, you remember the Mayflower, Mayflower Moving Company. That was the day the Baltimore Colts left. Mayflower Moving Company picked them up and they were gone. Bye. Right here's the Harley Davidson stuff. Again, they have their demo bikes all there set up. A little Harley thing. So let's go around this tree. Porto potties for the workers. Again, you can see all their demo bikes. I always tell my parents, it's like, you know what? Just go on a demo ride with me. Not that bad. There's some riders there. And a big old Harley Davidson truck. There we go. One of these days. There we go, that might be better. One of these days, I think it's closed off though, I think. I don't know, it looks like everyone's put away. There's an entry here. <laughs> Please maintain a six feet distance. There's some more sport bikes out of the backfire. pavilion area that's pretty cool the other stuff yes the Yamaha headquarters yeah too big too clunky getting better that one's pretty nice looking so 700 that sounds about right for me nah uh, it's another 700 Seven, seven. Not bad. I feel like that back row a little bit more. I'm not a big fan of Yamaha. So I'll keep this video going because right now this is the Indian motorcycle area. I'm probably not supposed to be passing behind this. I don't think there's anyone here that's not telling me otherwise. Where slingshot is, I have no idea. Take a look over here. I do want to get that one gift. There you go. When these signs go up, you know exactly what time it is here in Daytona Beach, folks. It is bike week, and here I am. There's the one little footbridge going across 92. Thankfully they put that up so you don't have to try and cross the street. My voice is hoarse as I've been calling people and being called all day. That's kind of the NASCAR building right over there. It's the official NASCAR. Headquarters. 
And this is a little special video that I'm making for you guys. Here we go across this bridge. I think I did choose the wrong bridge. I think I chose the long way though. There's the racetrack. I'll be back there on Monday. We are 100% guaranteed. And a little bit of a look. Walking over 92. Don't know if there's going to be much. And that's okay. It's nice. It's protected. Hopefully they do have some races this weekend. It's kind of a nice little brisk walk. Got my sweatshirt on. Jeans. I do have to get my grocery shopping done. So, because this week's all kinds of messed up. And next week is actually worse. So, yep. Oh, well, you'll see what happens. At, hopefully I can get some souvenirs. That's what I'm looking for. So that infield actually looks kind of full. I saw, I don't know if you could catch it, there are some trucks going through there. Some motorcycles. The good thing about showing up on a Monday afternoon is that it's not busy. I should do a ninja jump, but that's okay. I don't want to do anything crazy yet. Bye. So the most infamous, infamous moving company of them all. Oh, there's a, a Mayflower moving van. Yes, if you're old like me, they have to transport stuff too. Let's see here. There's a Best Buy. It's that place. Nice little walkway. Oh, look at that. Harley Davidson stuff set up. Big old American flag. I hope they have stuff like going. How do I get in there now? So yeah, I'll give you a little bit more perspective. Again, if you're old like me, you remember the Mayflower, Mayflower Moving Company. That was the day the Baltimore Colts left. Mayflower Moving Company picked them up and they were gone. Bye. Right here's the Harley Davidson stuff. Again, they have their demo bikes all there set up. A little Harley thing. So let's go around this tree. Porto potties for the workers. Again, you can see all their demo bikes. I always tell my parents, it's like, you know what? Just go on a demo ride with me. Not that bad. Some riders there. And a big old Harley Davidson truck. There we go. One of these days. these days. I think it's closed off though. I think. I don't know. It looks like everyone's put away. There's an entry here. Please <laughs> maintain six feet distance. Yeah, some more sport bikes. A lot of backfire. A little pavilion area. That's pretty cool. Other stuff. Yes, the Yamaha headquarters. Ah, eh, too big, too clunky. Getting better. That one's pretty nice looking. So 700. That sounds about right for me. Nah. Eh. It's another 700. Seven. I like that back row a little bit more. I'm not a big fan of Yamaha. So I'll keep this video going because right now this is the Indian motorcycle area. Probably not supposed to be passing behind this. I don't think there's anyone here that's not telling me otherwise. And where the slingshot is, I have no idea take a look over here. I do want to get that one gift. Mm. That's really about it. 